Today is the first Sunday of Lent. And our overarching theme for Lent for this season is releasing the shackles, God's redeeming love. And the first part of what we're going to look at today is the idea of immediate to eternal. Immediate to eternal. Now, you all know, or at least if you've been here a while, you know that we have, we're like busting out at the seams. They always say if you're 80% full, which we are, that you're not going to grow. And we've seen that trend here. We, we have people come in, there's no place really for them to sit, because you know, we all like our zone, we like our little safety zone, our personal space. And so we've seen our, our growth do this over the last few years. Um, and so what I, am, what I know is that this building is not conducive to the growth that God, I believe, wants to do here. And I, I see that. This is a blessing, amen? Yeah, man. But it also poses a big need for us to do something to make a change. To tell you the truth, I thought, I thought we would be out of this space by now. Now, we have been in this building over 10 years. It, it just flies by, doesn't it? It's over 10 years we've been in this space. I can't even hardly believe it from that first Christmas Eve service that we had and how we switched everything and things have transpired over the time. <coughs> I think about the text for today and I see that Jesus was baptized by John and then immediately the Spirit of Heaven comes and, and God in a loud voice says, this is my beloved yeah. and then Bam, right after that, right after there's this holy moment, Jesus gets sent out to the wilderness. Just like that. And he, out in the wilderness, he was tempted. And it wasn't so fun. It was not a big fanfare. It was just immediate thing. This calling of immediate, but it has eternal consequences. We have been blessed, I believe, that God desires for us to be more of a blessing, to go out from this place and do more. Wouldn't it be great if we had space for local groups to be present yeah. mm -hmm. here yeah, that's right. yeah. in this community? Wouldn't it be great if we had a kitchen to yes. serve those in need? Yes. We all know that it would be great, but are we willing to do something about it? Jesus was tempted while he was out there in the wilderness to settle. And we too may be tempted just to settle in this comfortable zone. A church home, after all, we have a church home. Many places don't have a church home. Amen. But when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he went to Galilee to proclaim the good news. And that, my friends, is exactly what I hope that we will do. I hope we can do it. I know we can do it. We have, we have a project that the board has been working on for a little while. And today we're going to unveil it. Hey, right on cue. See, that wasn't even planned. I want to challenge us not to settle for less than what God has for us. Tina, if you would come, and then um, when you're ready, uh, 
we'll have Kendra, you can come up and, and be ready, and Maury, you can come up. Just bring the baby with you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So like Pastor said, we've been truly blessed. For the past 10 years, more than 10 years, we've had this physical space to meet in and hold our worship. But like, like a tree, when you put it in a pot to start it growing, it grows and it grows, but then eventually that pot's not big enough. And it becomes maybe a little bit root-bound. So it's time that we start to take step towards finding a larger pot for us. All right. So there's many steps that we could start to, that we could take to start the process. Um, some of you might remember in, Jan in January at the budget wrap, and that mentioned that in June of next year our mortgage is due. Yeah. And it is currently basically when we get there it'll be a hundred thousand dollars. The step we've decided to take to start the process off of finding a, our bigger pot is to pay the property off rather than refinance it. This gives us more flexibility. It allows us to use this property for a lot more. We could use this income. We could use it to gain a nice down payment if we found something. It just gives us a lot more flexibility. Yeah. One of our members has made this awesome visual of this process. So we're this tree. <laughs> we're this tree. And it's time for our somewhat root-bound tree to branch out. This tree can hold 250 leaves before it just, you know, topples over and busts out of the pot. Uh, each leaf is going to be $400. We've got to fill this tree to pay off our property. Everyone here can put a leaf on the tree. You can put as many leaves on the tree as you want for $400. <laughs> and some of you may remember at the end of last year, the board of directors hosted a few fundraisers. They were like fun events. We had like a barbecue, pancake breakfast, an ice cream social, a pizza party. Um, and they were all fun and we got to visit and we got to eat good food. But also that gave us a jump start towards the tree. We raised five thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars off of those fundraisers. Just those yeah. couple of years. Yeah, right. Oh, that's a good one. Right. And then so just during, think what everybody could do. That's right. right. Sorry. <laughs> and then during the budget wrap, and that reminded us that through our good money handling, we had uh, kind of excess in checking. So we took a little bit of that, four thousand seven hundred twenty-four to be exact. And that gives us twenty-five leaves. Quick math. That's ten thousand dollars. That's 10% that's already on that tree. Okay, and that's only in the last couple months with a little group of people and us. So think of what we could do if we get out, if we get outside of this area, of this little box. Uh, we're already on our way, so it's up to everyone else to keep filling the tree in. And this might seem like it's a big task. I mean, it's a big tree, right? And it might seem like there's just too much room on that tree. We can't fill it. But I'm pretty sure at one time there was a lot of room in this building. And they might even have thought we'd never fill it. But it looks kind of full to me. So, Kendra. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, no money is too small. We have uh, made up coupon books. And each coupon is $25. That's a week of not going to Starbucks. Hey. Five dollars a cup of coffee is a bit much for me, but uh, some people can't live without it. There's 16 <coughs> coupons in each book. How many? 16 coupons in each book. And when you make, put the $25 in, you take one coupon, you write your name across the side right there, and you put it in with your $25, and you're on your way to making the leaf. Once you get 16, put in, you get a little thing in the back that says, congratulations, you have earned the leaf off the growing tree. Present this coupon to Pastor. You've won! Now I know there are some people that are on fixed incomes, have retired, are on disability, and can't put in an extra, extra. But if, say, Matt, and Marnie want a leaf on the tree, maybe they can split the fee and 200 and 200. You could do 200. You have until January of 2016. It doesn't have to be done tomorrow. It takes a while for the tree to blossom, you know? So, um, no money is too small. 
you can always designate it on your envelope when you come in for the growth of the church, for the tree, for whatever. But uh, you, buy a book, you get a book, you put your name on the tag, you put your $25 in. This is in addition to any tithe you have done. It isn't either or. It is tithe and. Okay? No fair. Some people say, well, I only give to the building fund. Okay, but that's not tithing. Well, I can give to the building fund, but I can't give my tithe, because if I give to my tithe, I can't give to the building fund. It's e not either or. It's in addition to your regular tithe. But again, you can share a leaf. Once your name, once you finish your book, your name or your names go up on the tree, on the leaf. So uh, come see me if you want a book. And I'll write your name down so we have a list of who has taken the books. And when you do your 16, God bless your heart, you're going to have a leaf. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I just want to encourage everyone to get on board with this wonderful project. Like a family tree filled with um, your names, your family names. We need to fill this tree with our church family names. It's it's important to grow. It's in like the financial health of our own lives. The church needs to be strong and healthy in order to grow. By making this project a success, we lay the foundation for the financial strength of the church as well. The more we expand, the more members we have. <coughs> the healthier our church is in, in both spiritually and financially. Um, I think this is important for not only the church, but for ourselves to grow. Thank you. So, this year-long project is doable because we can do it. Amen. We can empower one another to move from the intimate and immediate needs to the eternal blessings of what it is that God has for us. I want to also challenge us to deny the negative. Oh, I can hear it now, you know, the, the comments. All that church talks about is money, or all they want is money, you know. The thing about it is, is that you can't outgive God. Whether it's in money, or blessings, or any other thing. And so, if you're willing to put God first, and look at this, at the eternal picture. What, who can benefit? Who, who hasn't walked in the door yet that's out there that needs to know that we even exist? That's right. There's a lot of people that need what we already know. I want to also point out that Jesus reminded the disciples a little bit later to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. I wonder, this, this is just me, I wonder if this would preach better if I said, take up your favorite chair or your favorite couch and follow me. Because after all, then we would have a little bit of comfort and we would have some familiarity because we're going to go in uncharted waters. Pick up your cross. Clearly, I believe that God does not want us or wish us to suffer for suffering's sakes. Sometimes during Lent, people give up something or they, they feel like they have to suffer. I don't believe that God wants us to suffer for suffering's sake, but for the sake of our relationship with God and our and for the sake of our relationship with others. Sometimes we have to struggle through, amen? amen. It's struggling through to make it with our relationship with God. I don't know about you, but my relationship with God isn't always all peachy. <laughs> you 
know. I, I, you know, I point my finger and I do my thing with God, you know. I don't know, maybe you guys just have it all, all work figured out. But I, I struggle sometimes with my relationship with God. I have a lot of questions when I get to the eternal place. Mm -hmm. But it sure seems that this struggle is relative. It seems like it's central to the Christian experience, at least according to the writer of Matthew, I mean of, of Mark, because there's a struggle. Pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow. Maybe it's because this is the way it is in the real world. Anybody have a perfect day that you want to write down on the calendar? I've had a few, but I have more days where I struggle with things. Um, Paul says, and the suffering exists for people, and we are, and so as God's people, we're, we, we go through it. We go through it. We can either insulate ourselves from people, places, and things. We can insulate ourselves from the hurt. Or we can join with God and we can walk through those experiences. And in seeking that, then we can be released from the shackles that hold us. It's walking through those things that will release it for us. It's not burying our head and running away. We can be released and transformed by the experience of going through this together. Together. The same spirit that affirms and assures Jesus and drives him into the wilderness is truly the same Holy Spirit that pushes us and pushes us and pushes us to make us better. There's always... There will always be an immediate need to fulfill, and we can strive to fulfill them. We have the resources. I believe the resources are here. The key is to look forward to the eternal, where we can have a greater impact if people can find their way to a loving and a compassionate God. It may just be that Lent is the perfect time to spend some quiet moments with God so that we can carry our cross, we can carry our share. I'm not asking you to carry anybody else's share, but your own. We can do it together. We can figure out how to be God's people instead of trying to be all things to all people. Amen? Amen. Settling for the good, settling for God, will empower us along the way. I feel empowered by the goodness of God. And I hope that you will journey with us as we put our sights on the eternal. Immediately. God bless you this morning. Amen. Amen.